Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. I often say that, but this time I mean it. This time for real, I swear. So this time we are going to take a look at a paper shader, the transmission of a paper shader, how to deal with the front and the back texture, and how to put it all together. This one should be a short one, so let's get started right away. Welcome to 3D land. Now let me show you what we are going to do today. So we are going to do two things. So one thing is to separate the front side and the back side of a polygon. So you can notice that on the front side there is this print and on the back side there's this repeating logo here. And then last but not least what we're going to do is get the transmission going. So we can see through the paper in a diffuse way and the light will transport the printing on the one side to the other side and also the logos from the one side to the other side when it shines through. So let us jump into shader land and build the shader from scratch. Okay, this will be our shading scene. So let's explore it a little bit. So basically it's very, very simple. It only consists of a light and the build that you've seen in the other scene before. What I want to do when shading is to reverse the process a little bit since the transmission of the material is way more important than the side shader. At least I say that. And therefore we are going to look at the transmission first. To minimize all other scene effects such as GI, what I'm going to do is go to direct lighting and then here to GI none. So we just have the lighting and no bounces and nothing else. And this makes us a perfect scene for exploring the transmission. So let's first assign the material here and then move the camera into a position where we can see the light in a backlight situation because this is where you see the transmission best. So when we go to our material here and go into the transmission tab, the setting is zero, meaning that it's turned off. So let's increase the setting to a whopping one and then re-render or let's update the material here. And you can see now there is some transmission happening, but the effect is very weak. Let me explain where this is coming from. Basically, it's coming from the diffuse being rather high. So there's only a limited amount of energy that can be used. Meaning right now, 90% of the energy coming from the light is reflected. So there's only 10% of the energy left that can go elsewhere. And this is going into the transmission fully right now. So in return, what this means is if we are lowering our diffuse output, we getting a lot higher transmission amount because now there's zero energy reflected. So all the energy is allowed to transmit to the other side. As having extreme values for a material is never good to be realistic. Right now with a diffuse of zero and a transmission of one, there's no light bouncing off of the diffuse side and all of the light is transported through to the other side. So if you want to do a realistic paper, what you need to do is go to the diffuse and get in realistic numbers here. What are realistic numbers for white paper? Basically, they are called albedos and you can look them up on the internet. So the albedo value is the overall reflection strength in percent of the light energy bouncing back. And usually for a paper, it's around 0.6 to 0.8. So let's go with the middle 0.7. And as soon as I've done that, the transmission got lower because on the other side, now we got our diffuse back in the right brightness. Also, let's switch some render settings for now because now this is looking very unnaturalistic because we only have one bounce and we see a completely black shadow. So let's go to the render settings, go to direct lighting and set this back to path tracing. And as soon as I've done that, you can see this is looking a lot more naturalistic because we now have bounce light from our diffuse depth here. What you might also notice is that our transmission looks a bit too much. So it's like oily paper or a lampshade and we don't want to have that. So what we can do here is go to the transmission, also lower it a little bit. So something like 0.5 maybe. And this is really dependent on the paper, on its thickness and some other properties. And if you're satisfied with that, we can leave it at this for now. 
All right, now that we understand the interlinkage between diffuse and transmission, meaning the energy preservation of the shader, let's talk about the sides of the metal, meaning that we are going to texture the front and the back side of this object differently. So what we're going to do is create a HDRI, so make everything a little bit brighter, then go into the transmission and set it back to zero to show the effect of the shader a little bit better. And actually it's rather simple as there is a shader for that and it's called side. So when I search that, here we go, hit tab side, this one pops up. And if I then connect it to the diffuse, what you can see is now it differentiates the sides with black and white, meaning all the normals or all the polygons where the normals stick outward are white and all the polygons where the normal go in the opposite direction are black. And if you are now asking yourself how to do a texture based on that information, actually it's very simple as well. So what we are going to do is create a mix shader. Here we go. Or a mix node. Then pipe the side shader in there. And then what we're going to do is put in two different textures in there. So I've already prepared the bill texture here. And we're going to put that in slot A for now. And this is the back side. So what we can do is go and put it on the front side. So now you can see we put our text on the front side. On the back side is staying white without any texture. And this is the extent of it. You obviously can put in another texture here, such as the repeating logo. And now this is rather big. So what I've done in the presentation before was go to UV transform and transform it down. And since the bill here is not a square, we have to transform it down in a way so it fits the proportion here better. So let's go something like that. And now you can see we have two different textures on two different sides. And to make it a little bit more interesting, what we can do is grab a octane gradient shader that's down here, put it into the silvering shader here, and then go to the black part and make it another color, for example, something bluish. Here we go and obviously make it a little bit brighter so the blue shows up. So we have some color in here. Now you can see this is the shader working as it's intended, front and back, but now we have turned off our transmission. So let's continue with that. All right, so I tidied up our notes a little bit. So let's see what happens if we just go to the transmission and then just make it brighter. And let's go and turn off the HDRI for now, since we are dealing with a transmission shader and a direct light is a little bit a better way to see that. Now, what can we see here? The shader from the front ends up inverted on the back, and this is not something we want. So why is this in the first place? We established that black parts on the front will transmit the energy to the back since they are not reflected and therefore the energy is there. And this means that on the back side it will be the only part that is let through. Since we don't want that, let's actually figure out a way how to mitigate that. So basically what I have done here is put a gradient in front of the texture to get the values that I want. And actually, I'm going to do the same for the other texture as well. So the print on the front. Here we go. Now, we don't want to have that showing up in blue color. We want to still have a black and white print, but we want the black part uh, realistically not completely dark black, but a little bit lighter. And the white part, let's make this our 80% around um, gray point. Now, there is a distinction between the 80% you type in here and the 80% that is the linear measured value, but you sort of have a calculator here. So what you can do is put in the linear part inside of an RGB spectrum, then go to the Cinema 4D and show what value is in here. Now, we want to go with an 0.7 
spectrum or an 0.7 value and this is around a value of 85. So let's go here and type in the Cinema 4D value of 85 and this is good enough. Let's quickly do the same thing to the backside here. Let's go to the white portion and type in 85. All right, as good as that, but we are still seeing our artifacts here. It's gotten a little bit better, so the black part of the paper now transmits a little bit of light because we don't have completely black values inside of our shader. But it's still not the right solution by far. To work against that, what we need to do is actually pipe in a different set of values here in the transmission. So what we need to do is say to the transmission, yes, it's all right, but when you have ink at this portion of the paper, then don't transmit all the energy to the back. And actually we have a way to control the transmission by the shader that goes into the transmission. So what we need to do is get both of those values here. So let's do this. Let's actually get a multiply and multiply both of those values together. Here we go. And then pipe that into the transmission. Here we go. Now this is looking good. And this is looking much better than before, since we also now get the black part showing through. Now, this might be a little bit too strong for your taste. So let's turn around the light actually, and let's see the logo from the backside bleeding through. So the bleeding through here is a little bit too strong. So what you want to do is go and get another multiply. So I disable the preview and duplicate that. And then we can the strength of the transmission. So to do that, we just can plug in a float texture, for example. Here we go. And then you can already see the lower we have the value, the lower the transmission overall is. So you can play around with the setting until you're satisfied. Okay, it's already time to summarize. So as you've seen in the beginning, this can be built into a much more hefty shader with a lot more things in it. But this is the bare bone working version and it's already showing great success. So what did we do? We just took our base black and white textures, made them not as extreme, gave them color or just not as extreme values, then put them together, multiplied them together so we have a in-between layer where both of them coming together. Then we built in a strength slider for the transmission so we can get the strength to our liking. And then also used a side shader to get the textures to each side. When we rotate the light in the right angle here, you can see it is showing up on one side and of course on the other. Here we go. And this is pretty much how I do paper shading in Octane and get some really good results. So hopefully this tutorial wasn't too short. As I said in the beginning, I tried to make it as short as possible. Hopefully you still caught all the information. If not, let me know down in the comments below. After the massive tutorial last week about the CD or diffraction grading, this one definitely is a smaller one and one of the reasons is that it is my birthday tomorrow and I don't want to sit at the computer and edit this all week and long. So hopefully you can take away something still and get a nice paper shader out of this. Though it has been short, I want to thank my Patreons who made this possible, especially my 50 euro tier subscribers Gilles Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Thank you so much. But also my 15 euro tier subscribers that contribute so much to the well-being of this channel. So thanks a lot to Anton, Eduardo Vecchietti, George Luna, Jakob Fung, Just a Freakin, Chris Clemson, Lucas Pazon, 
Randall King, a.k.a. Alessandro Bonchio, Marty Kane, Part 1 of 2, Raiko, Sin CGI, Shamos Johnson, and Yasin Rupp. If you like this channel and want to support it, you can also become a Patreon by going to the Patreon page. The link is down in the description below. As a bonus, you get access to all the scenes I use in my tutorial there, no matter what tier you're subscribed to. And if you're still watching, thank you so very much for staying this long. If you're still with me, let's post a paper or page emoticon in the comments. Thank you very much. And with this, I'm wishing you an awesome time and happy rendering. Bye.